I will share just a little bit with you this evening from John the fifth chapter. Something here that we read John chapter five, verse one. <clears throat> That after this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind, all withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. What do you think about that? An angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatever disease that he had. And I think that would be a wonderful witness then, and I actually even think that that would be a wonderful witness today. If I could find that pool, and if I knew that at a certain season an angel came to that pool and troubled the water in that pool, and if I had a disease that needed healing, they would have a job keeping me out of that pool. In fact, I might just get in the pool and stay. I might just be there when the angel came. But the witness was there in the middle of Jerusalem in the sheep market. And the thing that I want to share with you tonight here is something that Jesus said and did to the man. And the words are in verse number 6 of this. And I'll just read them down to that. Verse 5 and 6, it says, A certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. And Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there a long time in that situation. And he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And you know, we learn a lot about the intentions of a person by listening to what they say and then what they do. And the Lord seeing this man 38 years impotent in his feet laying in a pool waiting on an angel or at least they say that there was an angel that was going to come. The Lord didn't say any of that. It was just described there in Scripture as being a situation that existed where an angel came periodically in troubled water. But the Lord looked at this man and He said, Will you be made whole? And I like that, the question to the fellow there. He said, Will you be made whole? And I'm sure at first on hearing the words or the question that the Lord put to him, it just sounded like maybe just idle words or something that really didn't mean anything from somebody who really was nobody that just happened up on him. And, Will you be made whole? Will you be made whole? And I would imagine that he, you know, in his response to Jesus, which you can see, right below that in verse number 7. It did at least appear to me in this reading of this next verse 
the impotent man answered him and said, Sir, that's polite, isn't it, sir? I have no man that when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Somebody always gets in before me. And Jesus just said unto him, that's the next verse down, he said, Rise and take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. W-H-O-L-E, whole. What do y'all suppose it would be like to be made whole? Whole, sanctified, holy, Paul said. In your spirit and your soul and your body, just made whole again. You know, my Bible teaches me that Jesus, my Savior, came to make people whole. People who were uh, not whole. People who were hurt. People who, you know, the Lord said, I am anointed to preach this gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. To preach this gospel to people, amen, who need a gospel. The Lord saw a man that needed wholeness. And the Lord ministered wholeness. He didn't part, he didn't just partially do something for the man. He said, just take up your bed. Now here's a man that couldn't walk and had not walked for 38 years, which is a very, very long time to be impotent in your feet. But when the Lord said, take up your bed and walk, the scripture says immediately the man was made whole and he took up his bed and he walked. He took up his bed and he walked. And you know what? I believe that the Lord, I believe that the word of the Lord was manifested that day to somebody. I believe that the word of the Lord worked that day for someone who had need in his life, in his body. And church, we've all been there in our lives where we've had need in our lives, in our bodies. And I think, Lord, you're not in, you're not a part, you don't, you don't show partiality. You are not uh, a respecter of persons. I, the Apostle Peter preached that to Cornelius as he observed what the Lord was doing, and I'm going to say tonight, I think that the Lord will still make me whole. Amen. Make my whole body, my whole spirit, my whole mind whole. Amen? Amen? There are a lot of folks who would just say, well, you don't look whole to me. Well, I can't help what it looks like. The Word of the Lord says Jesus makes us whole. It says in Isaiah 53 that he was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes we were healed. And the chastisement of my peace for my peace was upon him. And that Jesus was a Savior. He came to save us. To redeem us and make us whole. Like He did the man. And I can see picking up your bed. It says in verse 9, the man was made whole and took up his bed. And he walked. He took up his bed and he walked. That was an unusual sight, I'm sure, for people around there because they had never seen the man take up his bed. He had seen, they had seen the man on his bed, laying on his bed. 
inability to move, inability to help himself. I can't get in the water. Somebody always beats me. Somebody will always be beating you. I don't care how fast you go or how smart you get, somebody's always going to be ahead of you. They're going to beat you to the prize. But you see, with Jesus, when He's there, you have the prize standing with you. So will you be made whole? And the man just says, well, you know, when the water is troubled, I can't get into it fast enough. And so the Lord is very direct with His Word. He just simply says, take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. And I'm going to say this to you. Although there were, there, there, there does not appear to be to have been that day in that pool area where that man was, people who appreciated what just happened. But I'm saying that when things unfolded for this man later on down the road and they said, what happened to you? And he said, well, there was a man that told me to take up my bed and walk. Who was that? Well, I don't know who it was. It was the Lord a man that was manifesting the work of his Father in heaven in this earth. Church, don't you just long for the day, amen, when the, when the Word and the work of the Lord is manifested, amen, amen. that people are healed of their diseases, yes. amen, that if they're lame or any other issue with their physical body, is, it has been, been there all their life that the, that the Lord will just say, hey, I'm here to make you whole. Yeah. Now the sad commentary on this whole illustration that I have to share with you is in the next verse, in verse number 10, it says, The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. It is... The Sabbath day. So, because it is the Sabbath day, you need to put your bed down. And you need to lay back down on the ground. And you need to lay there as if none of this ever happened. As if you are still impotent in your feet, that you've still been there 38 years, and none of this ever happened. Just wipe it away. And church, isn't that an amazing thing? That when such a marvelous event can happen for a person, that he's strengthened in his feet. He's walking, and not just is he walking, but he is carrying his bed. That there is this element around there. And it is a very influential and powerful element that would come to the fellow and say, you can't carry your bed today. You can't be healed today. They didn't want him carrying his bed. They didn't want him healed. But you see, the Lord is different. The Lord don't care what popular opinion is about the day or the night or any other season. If, he's, if you encounter him and he comes into your situation and heals you, forget about what everybody else thinks about your deal. He just said, well, verse 11, he said, He that made me whole, He said to me, Take up your bed and walk. He's the one that said unto me, Take up your bed. Take up your bed and walk. And church, I want you to see, if you never see anything else out of this tonight, see this. Amen. That Jesus is different from all the others. Jesus don't care about what Jesus cares about is you. He cares about the person. He cares about your comfort. He cares about your peace. He cares that you can't walk. And He wants to make you whole. Amen. And I still believe that Jesus would rather have us whole than lame. Amen. I think He would rather have us healed Then sick. I don't believe he wants my body racked. 
with discomfort and pain. Last night, I lay in bed and I told Debbie, I said, Dad, my knees hurt. Alan asked me tonight if my back hurt. I told him no. And I'm not going to tell you why he asked me that. But I said, Deb, my knees hurt. She's always got hurting knees. Her knees just, I have to rub them all the time. But I said, baby, my knees hurt. My body, I can feel pain in it. Y'all ever feel pain in yours? <laughs> and pain is a discomfort. And the first thing that we want to do, you know, <coughs> is I say, what do we have in the medicine cabinet? Do we have any Tylenol up there? And I know generally that we do. <laughs> we actually don't. We actually don't. But anyhow, I know, you know, that I want to be relieved of discomfort. And, and Jesus in this relieved a person of his pain and his discomfort. And I just believe, church, that the Lord is still sensitive to our, to our weaknesses, our infirmities. Yes. And, you know, I don't know what the holdup is, but I would like to just have my body healed. You know, I don't want to have to worry about something coming on it or in it. I would rather just rest in the knowledge and comfort that I have a Savior Amen. that came into this world 2,000 years ago to save me, yes. to save me from my enemies, and death is my enemy, disease is my enemy, and He came to save me, and He came to save you. Amen. And church, He's worthy tonight of some of your time and some of your appreciation. He's just, he just worthy of it. And you know what? I'm a believer like this. I think, I think the more you thank somebody, amen, the more likely they are to come back and do, do. That's why That's why when you do something for me, I might just thank you and thank you and thank you, thinking that you just might come back and do some more. <laughs> but anyhow, with the Lord, it don't work like that. Just thank Him because you love Him and that you understand really what it is that He is to us. And you know, there are, there are difficulties that we have physically, mentally, in this life, but I know my Redeemer lives. And I know at some point, some place in time, He's going to set us free. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be a good life. Well, it's still a good life, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Knowing the Lord. God bless your heart. Would you stand with me tonight? Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and love you.